everyone how are you i hope you're good i hope this video finds you in good health um it's no secret that there is some up <coughs> happening in the world at the moment and i hope a lot of you are staying inside as much as you can uh so today i'm coming at you with a very easy relaxing project to make this is great for those of you who are new to sewing or maybe you just want to make drawstring bags because honestly same or maybe you just want to hang out and watch which is also totally okay too so what you're looking at now is a drawstring bag that I got a few years back, but and I like to use it for my lunches, but it's a little too small for that. And I've been meaning to make myself a new one for forever now. So with being stuck indoors and all, why not now? So let's get making. So for my choice of fabric, since I will be using this as a lunch bag, I wanted to pick something that was a little more sturdy. I found this 100% cotton print in my fabric stash, which I will be using today. Uh, you can really use whatever you want. Um, again, it depends what you're making. Although I would say if you're new to sewing, I would avoid using anything like silk, velvet, or chiffon, as those are trickier fabrics to sew with. So essentially before you sew your bag, it's just going to be one long rectangular piece of fabric, which you're then going to fold in half. You don't want to cut two separate squares. I'm sure you could if you want, but you would just be creating a lot of extra work for yourself. This step is optional, but if you do have an iron that's available to you, I highly recommend just ironing out your fabric before you begin to sew. It's just a lot easier to work with. And of course, make sure that the iron is on the proper settings for the fabric that you have chosen. Okay, so starting from the quote unquote top of our bag, um, I measured two inches down um, the sides of the bag, each side, and folded the corners in ever so slightly and ironed them flat. And I repeated that step another three times because you wanna do this to all four corners. Okay, so now we're basically creating the tube which the drawstring will go through. So I folded the top of the bag uh, down just about a quarter of an inch and ironed that flat and I did that to both ends. So now I'm folding the top again, this time slightly wider, about half an inch, I would even say three quarters of an inch, depending on how chunky or thin your drawstring is, this can really depend, and then ironed it flat and pinned it down in place. So I pick my thread of choice, a light blue to match my fabric, and then I set my stitch distance to about the middle. Um, but if you are be a new uh, beginner uh, when it comes to sewing, I recommend setting it to a wider stitch because it is a lot easier to stitch rip if you make any mistakes. So I'm stitching just along the edge of the fold here and removing the pins as I go. Okay, so now with your bag, folded in half and right sides facing together, you're going to pin down both sides. So while you're doing this, make sure not to sew over the part you folded previously or else you won't be able to get your drawstring in. So just sew all the way down in a straight stitch down the sides and do this to both sides. So you're going to want to finish off the inside seams of your bag or else it will fray. Um, if you have a serger, that's great, but for those of you that don't, you can use a zigzag stitch on your machine um, to kind of act as a serger and to stop your seams from fraying. 
So you're going to want to do this stitch along the edge of both of the seams on the inside of your bag. So now you should have a functioning bag, or at least something that resembles a bag. So now we're going to be doing our drawstrings. But before that, I turned it inside out, and you're gonna wanna press the little corners out to get a really nice crisp edge. I just grabbed a pair, um, or one singular chopstick, and as you can see, I'm pushing the corner out. You don't wanna use anything too sharp, or else it will rip right through your fabric. All right, so after giving it a nice little final iron, we're going to be doing the cord part, which is the drawstring part of this bag. So when it comes to picking a string to use, you can really, again, use anything. Um, for something like this, I would recommend using like a nylon cord. A, it doesn't fray as much and you can burn the edges to close the, um, to stop it from fraying and be with it being plastic I find it just kind of glides easier through the tunnel of the fabric um, but I have a cotton cord here 100% cotton cord and that's all I have on hand and you know trying not to leave my house especially for something as frivolous as cord so I'm going to be using cotton cord and again you can use whatever you like but I do find that the nylon works a little easier for things like this so here I have a long piece of cord that I folded in half and measured about four inches of length on each side. I actually ended up making it a tiny little bit shorter, but it's always better to have it too long than too short. And then taking a safety pin, I attached it to one end of the string and then fed it through the tunnel we created. Once the other end of the string had been fed through the fabric, I cut off the frayed edges and tied the two ends in a knot. You're going to want to repeat that same last step with another piece of cord, the same size, but this time feed it through the other side so that the knotted end is on the other side. You're going to want to have a knotted end on each side. So there you have it, your very own drawstring bag. I hope this video was useful or it just took your mind off things um, during this stressful time. Um, let me know if there's any other easy uh, tutorials you'd like to see or anything else you'd like to see from me in general. I do have a bit more free time at the moment due to this um, virus. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye!